Are you going through a spiritual awakening? And you are starting to realize that maybe everything that you have believed about yourself and the world around you is not true. Stay tuned. I want to talk to you a little bit about how your energetic system is a part of who you are and how you can reprogram it as you go through your awakening. Welcome back. My name is Angie and I am your soul alignment mentor, bringing you intuitive messages from my spirit team to help you align with your highest self. So today I want to talk a little bit about the process of going through in an awakening and what it might feel like. I had my awakening back in 2016 and it was very sudden and a strange experience. Um, I will drop my book Leaf Lessons, the link to it below. If you would like to grab that book um, to read a little bit more about my story and my healing journey, as well as my second book, Composting Ego, where I talk about understanding the deconstruction process if you were leaving behind religion, uh, which is what my awakening was. So back in 2016, strange thing happened to me. I was in my backyard and I had been kind of questioning and seeking things for a few years. And because I was such a dedicated, strong, faithful Christian woman that truly, truly wanted to serve God and do the absolute best I could, I continually felt like I wasn't enough. I was always trying to think of how do I get better? How do I serve God better? How do I feel better? How do I, you know, be who I'm supposed to be in this world? And that day, it was a hot July summer day in my backyard, mowing my yard. I suddenly heard a audible voice that came through, which now I understand were my spirit guides that said, you're doing it wrong. And this flood of emotion and feeling came over my entire body. I felt as if there was actually somebody in my yard talking to me. So I remember I turned my mower off and I stood and I looked around my yard to see if anybody else was there. And sure enough, there was not. And I heard it again. You are doing it wrong. And when I heard it the second time, I realized there's a voice talking to me. And I think it was God. I'm not sure what it is. At that time, I had no idea that we had spirit guides or a spirit team or that loved ones of spirits could communicate with us or, you know, all the programming that I had with my religious beliefs were that anything that we might have contact with besides Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God is a demon. And so I was a little confused, but something was telling me that I needed to listen to this voice. And so I started, this voice started saying other things to me. And I started realizing that I was living in a teeny tiny box, that I wasn't living up to my potential. I wasn't living in my sole purpose. I wasn't doing what I was here on earth to do. And I suddenly got really uncomfortable with everything in my life. I got uncomfortable with um, the work I was doing. I was working in the mental health field. I loved working in a mental health field, but I felt like there's more of an impact I can make than just being in this place here. Um, I got uncomfortable with my religious beliefs and going to church. I got uncomfortable with my friends and trying to fit in, even though I suddenly started to um, like I, I had believed in, you know, considered them family for years. And then I started thinking differently and feeling differently. And I just couldn't fit in anymore into that same place, which was a hard thing for me. Then as time went on, I started to change the way that I would do things. I remember I was terrified to listen to anything but Christian music. Slowly, I started to allow myself to uh, start doing things I enjoyed that I had forgot that I enjoyed. Um, I didn't actually start 
going to church or uh, being like a dedicated Christian until around the age 16 is when I started. Um, and then as that just kind of progressed over the years, as I was in the church, um, I went to a Christian college, I did missions work, I did all that stuff to in attempts to please and serve God and be the best person I could be mostly to go to heaven, but also to help other people and help save them so they wouldn't go to hell. And as I've awoken and went through my journey of deconstruction, um, healed a lot of childhood trauma, healed a lot of things, I began to awaken and understand the things that I was told were bad were actually things that could empower me. Things such as getting um, back in touch with my own inner power, things such as understanding my chakra system, adding meditation into my daily life, connecting with my spirit guides, um, opening up my intuition to my spiritual gifts such as mediumship or psychic abilities, like all these things that were dormant inside of me because of fear. But what is interesting about this process of awakening is that it, it takes time because it took time to get you to where you were. The programming that you have in your body, in your mind, your belief system and the energy system, it takes time to undo all that. And so what I do now is I help people to energetically realign with their true authentic self, with their highest self, which is the soul. And as you go through the awakening journey, you start to realize that your true self isn't the things that you have believed about yourself, isn't the things you've been taught to believe, isn't necessarily this God in the sky that is going to, you know, dictate whether you go to heaven or hell. It's not about living up to a standard or uh, trying to be good enough. It's about you learning who you are, loving yourself first, and then radiating love within yourself outward into the world around you. And this releases a lot of the fears and needs to perform, chase, be something that you are not, or try to live up to standards that are pretty impossible to live up to. A lot of people become exhausted with the process of trying to be something. And this happens in all settings, not just from people that have been in religion, but this that happens in any place where you have been taught that you have to be something to be good enough, or you have to strive in a certain way to be successful, to be seen as valuable, to be seen as worthy maybe in a career or a um, sport or something that you have been taught that you have to dedicate your time and energy into. And these things are not necessarily bad to go after goals, to strive after things, to become better, to um, improve these things. But when you do it with an emptiness inside of you, then you continue to remain empty even when you succeed at all the outward things or all the things that appear to be good and um, successful in your life. And so I want to talk a little bit about why healing the energetic system of who you are is one of the key first things that will help you in realigning with who you are as your most authentic self and the intuitive gifts that you already have inside of you, the abilities you have inside of you that maybe were dormant because you were going off on a path that maybe wasn't yours. Maybe you were trying to please, please a parent or fit in with friends or uh, feel secure in life in some way. And so what happens is from a very young age, we, our energetic system, our belief system, our understanding of ourselves in the world starts to be developed. And I'm going to take you through a very short, brief overview of our chakra system. Now, we have 114 chakras in total, but I'm going to focus on the main seven that you would probably hear more about in um, the spiritual community. And the reason I talk about these seven chakras is because I have a program where I help people go through each chakra and discover my maybe what is stored in that energy field. Um, and then uncover that, release it, reprogram it. And as you do that, as you let go of what has been put in the energy, you start to recreate and fill in the truth of who you are instead of what you have been told you are.
So starting from the time that you are born, you start to develop your first chakra, which is your root chakra. It's the base of your spine where you sit. And the root chakra is all about safety. It's all about coming into the security of this human life. It's all about feeling grounded within who you are, like knowing that you are a part of something that you have, um, like this ability to be present in your own life. But a lot of times what happens is we come into this world and our spirit is pretty shocked when it gets here. I have had intuitive insights from my spirit team about what it's like for our spirit to come to be a human and how shocking it is because we come from this place that is completely full of love, completely free, um, doesn't have the obstacles and the lower uh, dense energy in it. And we come down and we, the first thing we come into is this body that is limiting compared to our true and highest self, our spirit. So from the age, from birth until the age of seven, we are developing our root, the foundation and safety of who we are. And those that have had significant trauma within those first seven years of your life, those uh, experiences or moments that you felt unsafe or you felt ungrounded or you felt unseen or you felt as if you weren't enough get stored in your root chakra. And here's where it gets hard. Because we're so young, a lot of us don't remember that experience. We may not know what got stored in that energy. So that's why working with an intuitive healer that can help you get into the actual frequency of that energy and work with it and release it will help you to uncover and understand what might have caused some kind of imbalance or energy inside of you that has repeated throughout your life since you were before you were seven. So if you struggle with finances or you struggle with feeling secure and safe or belief that you're good enough or all these things, that all started before age of seven. So going back to heal that is going to be important. Now moving up to the next chakra is our sac sacral chakra and that is below the belly button, your lower stomach area. Our sacral chakra begins to develop after age seven. So we're, we're developing our sacral chakra between the age of eight to 14. So our chakra system goes in every seven years. So as we're working or we're developing our sacral chakra, we are actually moving into the energy of our creativity, into the energy of safety within relationships. Um, if you think about a, like a seven to 14 year old, this is when we start going to school. This is when we start developing friendships. This is when we start to go through maybe puberty. This is when we start to express ourselves or learn how to express ourselves or use our voice a little bit more. Um, in this stage, we start to develop uh, sexuality. Maybe we, as we start to learn about sex or we start to understand what that is. And so everything that happens within that age period from seven to 14 is a part of developing your ability to connect with yourself and other people around you. And it it can be a hard time because if you don't feel secure in yourself, if you haven't had those basic needs met in the first part of your life before age seven in your root chakra, pulling that same belief system into the sacral and now developing the energy of your creativity and relationships. If you imagine you don't feel safe prior, you may not 
fully feel safe in relationship or friendships or feeling as if you belong. So there might be a lot of things that are stored within your sacral energy based like that might impact how you show up even in your adult life with your sexuality, relationships, creativity, um, really tapping into your intuition as well. Like uh, some of your spiritual gifts, a lot of people have their intuition stored within their sacral chakra. Um, if you know anything about human design, which is a whole nother thing, there's a lot of people that are, um, that have their intuitive gifts stored in the sacral. So if you've went through something painful or traumatic in that time period, um, particularly if you've had like any kind of sexual abuse or relationship abuse, maybe a parent, um, emotionally wasn't there for you or emotionally put you down or you had maybe some physical things happen. Um, all that belief system energy and the way that you felt in those moments gets stored in your sacral and repeat as patterns in your life. Then you move up to the solar plexus, which we start developing around 14 to 21. And if you think about the ages of 14 to 21, again, we're still in this phase of making friends, connecting with people, but we're kind of getting into the place where we're like, what do I want to be in this world? What do, who am I? What is my purpose? What direction do I want to take? Um, having thoughts about your independence, trying to figure out like who we are as a soul. You might start to uh, think more about spiritual things even in this time period. Um, you really start to under, like, develop your personality. And so based on who you're around, the school system in your end, um, what activities you're involved in, all the things that are happening in your life outwardly are impacting who you are inwardly. And so you're starting to store all these beliefs and energy in your, in your solar plexus, which is your upper stomach. And those beliefs will continue to cycle throughout your life. If they are not aligned with your true self, they can cause a lot of self-worth um, issues where maybe self-esteem or anxiety or trying to fit in kind of come in. Um, this, again, because if your lower chakras have not been healthy and developed in healthy ways, pulling up those, that unsafe feeling, the fear of um, like your own sexuality, these kind of things pull up into your confidence. And then you kind of cycle all that same energy within your energetic system. Now, moving up even further, we move into the heart chakra. The heart chakra begins to develop fully between 22 and 28. And this is when we start to really try to understand love, love for ourselves, love for other people. And where it gets kind of off is again, going back to that foundation of who you are, the root sacral and solar plexus, anything stored in that will come up into this energetic system. And you may not have developed self love, you may not have fully developed an identity or independence in yourself, you may have developed this fear of not being enough. And so you start to act out of this and try to find love outside of yourself to pull it in instead of knowing how to fill yourself up with your own love. And this is what we take into our relationships as we go into our early adulthood. A lot of people get married in their 20s. A lot of people start to have children in their 20s. And if you haven't had a healthy foundation and you haven't healed those energies prior to this time, you're going to pull in those same beliefs and energies into the relationships that you develop as a young adult, into the relationships with your children. And then those patterns can repeat the same thing that you were taught from your parents or the people you were, you spent your younger years around will repeat in your life as you get older. And so it can be frustrating because it's not that we're bad people or we're doing anything wrong. It's just that we have been programmed 
to be disconnected from our true self. And so what we have to do is come back into the energy of self-love because love is who we really are. Love is the essence of our higher self and our soul. And it feels a little selfish sometimes to come back into self-love when you haven't had that because it feels like you're, you might be letting people down or you're not being who other people need you to to be because in, we have often developed a codependency on I feel good about myself when other people around me feel good or when I feel like they like me or when I feel like they love me. And so we're seeking something outside of ourselves to fill that void of which we are lacking inside. Then we can move up to our throat chakra. The throat chakra is where we communicate. But interesting, the throat chakra also has a lot of self-worth in it. And if you think about it, if your lower chakras have gone through any traumas or experiences where you had to shut your voice down or you weren't believed or you were um, told to speak a certain way or be a certain way, that will be programmed in your throat chakra before you even get to this. So between the age 29 to 35, people might start trying to find their voice. They might be trying to speak up more for themselves or be a little bit more honest. And it can be a hard thing if you don't already have that lower foundation of safety to be able to be in this fully where and comfortably where you can express yourself and share yourself and be authentic and, and without fear. A lot of us hold our voice back because we're afraid of what somebody might think or we think that, that we have to be a certain way. Um, Either you become really quiet or you become overly vocal. Uh, this is where people might become outwardly like angry expressing themselves or they withdraw. So the throat chakra is an important part of our development in our identity and allowing ourselves to show up for ourselves, but also holding healthy boundaries, speaking up for ourselves, being authentic in our own self. Then moving up to the third eye, and this is developed between age 36 to 42. This, the third eye is often connected a lot with the spiritual community and opening yourself up to the like higher dimensions or your psychic abilities or mediumship abilities or all these things, which it is connected to that. However, it's also connected to your own intuition that you already have within your spirit with wisdom and understanding of who you are and who the universe is. It also has where you might hold your belief system. So depending on where you grew, grew up or what you were taught growing up about spirituality, about God, about the universe, about you know, who you are as a spiritual being, if you were taught that, that is all stored in your third eye. So being able to clear out and open the third eye into the reality of the truth, it can be a, a difficult thing because we often will have blocks in the third eye because um, we've had to shut something down in our early life within the, our other energetic system. So if your root and your sacral and your solar plexus and your heart in your throat all have blocks, they're going to be blocking the third eye. And I get this from a lot of my clients that want to start doing meditations or like doing uh, guided meditations or visual meditations. I hear from people, I can't see, I can't visualize, I can't do this. And it one, it could be that that is not necessarily one of your gifts or how you work, but also it could be because you have a block somewhere in your lower chakras that has shut off something in your ability to open your third eye in that way. And it's basically to protect you. It's not something that is blocked that is trying to harm you or restrict you. It's to protect you because if you know something, then it leaves you vulnerable, really. So working with the third eye, opening it, clearing that out requires working with all the other chakras as well. Then you move up into the crown chakra which is developed between age 43 and 49. And so if you think about this age group, there is this saying of midlife crisis. 
And the reason that this happens is because when you get to this place, your consciousness begins to develop and open up. This is when people start to have spiritual awakenings. This is when people start to uh, fear the unknown. They might start thinking about how half of their life is over. They might start thinking about death. There might be experiencing more death around them. Um, as you get older, more and more people around you might start passing away. Um, you might start losing parents, uh, grandparents, you know, all these things can happen. And so there's a, there's a connected energy between the crown and the lower chakras because if you have had a fearful system that was built up in you or a, um, disconnected in like belief from your true self, when you go through the awakening, it can be really hard and shocking to your system because it kind of opens you up to experiences that you don't know about that you have repressed, you haven't been open to. And as far as like having a midlife crisis, the crown chakra often pulls you back down into the root chakra when you've developed your seven chakras. And when you go back into the root, if that root is not healthy in your foundation and in your early childhood, and you felt like you didn't receive something or you, there was something you needed, or maybe as a, you know, six-year-old, you wanted that toy convertible car. Now you all of a sudden, you're like, I'm an adult, I'm going to go do this. And so this is why you might see people um, kind of completely changing their life or uh, go either going to the extreme of like moving, you know, changing, leaving their family, all these kind of things can happen. But, and it's not necessarily that these things are bad. It's just in the energy and how it's happening. And if that person is aware of what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it. But as you go through an awakening and you work through these energies and you open up your consciousness, it's important to understand that the way you start to develop your thinking and your opening to your highest self through your crown chakra and your consciousness, your belief system, your energy system, who you have been throughout your whole life will impact this. So it is really important to work on healing your entire energetic system in order to awaken to higher consciousness and understanding of the universe, of God, of spirituality, of who you are as a soul, as a spirit living a human life. And once you start to open these things up, remembering to fill yourself back up with self-love, fill yourself back up with affirmations, allow yourself to learn how to set boundaries energetically and physically and kind of teach your nervous system to relax as you go through this because it might feel uneasy for your body as you start to heal and uncover any of these blocks that have been de developed in your energy field. So these are things that I encourage my clients to do. It's the first seven weeks that I always do with any client that I work with one-on-one -on -one for mentoring is working through this energetic system and teaching them about how this develops, who they are, but also getting really personally deep into the energy so that you can know what needs to be healed and what needs to be released. And a lot of people think, well, I can't remember things or I don't know. You don't have to. Your body remembers, your energy remembers. And so what we have to do is get in touch with the feeling that the energy is creating in your body. The feeling could be an emotional pain or belief or anxiety or fear or something, or it could be a physical pain because everything energetically connected in our body or stored in our body will present itself in some kind of form, whether that's emotional or physical. And those are our clues that our body is giving us of what is stored in our energy field and what needs to be healed and released. So paying attention to triggers or pains is really important as you go on your awakening and healing journey. And so 
I encourage you to be kind to yourself, love yourself as you go through the process. If you need support, please reach out to me. I can help you work through this um, through my mentorship program. Again, that first seven weeks is what I focus on. And then if you continue after that, we'll start to integrate these things Start to identify who you really are, open that up, live it out loud, um, and maybe even develop your spiritual gifts and connection with your intuition so you can start sharing that more with the world and um, use it for yourself as well. So if that's of interest to you, uh, again, below you will find my information. Just uh, get in contact with me and I would be happy to support you through that process. Until I meet you again, I wish you the best day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. I send you all the universal love. Namaste.